what is the purpose, the difference in the purpose between the public delivery <coughs> of a service and the private delivery of a service? What is the difference? Well, in the public system, what you're trying to do is to deliver a service to all. In a private system, your end goal is profit. Now, we're not saying here which one is better than the other. We're simply saying that there's a distinction in what is driving the delivery of the services if we're operating within a public model versus a private model. Water is a problematic area of the law. Now, what happens if the person living here decides they're going to dam the stream. All this person is doing is making use of the resources that are available on their land. But there are consequences for everyone else. And in these instances, negative consequences. Is their land? Is it not? They can do with it as they please. Or are there limitations on what they can and cannot do? And this is the issue that arose in the Bradford v. Pickles case. Now, Pickles land contained the main reservoir. It fed the whole of the Bradford community, the Bradford municipality. What Pickles did was dam up the reservoir. And he was proposing to sell his land to the Bradford community for a significant profit. So in essence, what Mr. Pickles was doing was holding the Bradford community to ransom via their access to water. Went before the House of Lords. The House of Lords held that proprietary rights are so sacred that an owner has the right to use their property maliciously if they so choose. And the state and the courts cannot intervene. The thing that is important to think of is think of this from the different theoretical perspectives. Because how you critique the ruling depends on which theory you apply. So if you come at this from a natural law perspective, chances are you would dispute the ruling. So ultimately the issue ends up being the protection of property owners from state intervention. To what extent do we allow the government to intervene, to intrude upon our lives, upon our proprietary rights? Now, Metro Auto is a private company. The purpose of this private company is two things, the delivery of water and the removal of wastewater. So what Metro Water sought to do was to turn a profit via the supply and removal of water. Gladwin pays for the delivery of water, but he refuses to pay for the removal. He says the price is too high. What kind of a duty does Metro Water have? Do they have a duty, an obligation to provide this service regardless as to whether or not he pays? Or is this merely, is water in this instance just another commodity? Gladwin argued the doctrine of prime necessity. It states very clearly, a monopoly provider of an essential service has a duty to provide that service at a reasonable price. Gladwin lost the case. Gladwin lost because the Commerce Act conflicts with the doctrine of prime necessity. And what the Commerce Act calls for is flexibility in price setting. These cases raise three very important questions, three critical questions. Question number one, should the courts provide absolute protection for property rights? Or should there be limits on those rights? Question number two, if the courts do place limits on those rights, are all limits devised to support the public good permissible? 
question number three, if not, then how does the court go about distinguishing between legitimate and illegitimate limits? It's not enough for you to articulate your opinion, how you feel this should go. What you have to do is look to the different theoretical perspectives and say, okay, how is this going to influence the outcome of the case? Positivism. Lawmakers need to enunciate, need to clarify which limits are permissible and which ones are not. Case closed. Others say, well, no, we're dealing with water. And if we're dealing with water, if there is no water, there is no life. So we take a natural law perspective. So this is a moral issue. What we need to do is take a moral position on this. So we argue human rights. And we say that water is a human right that everyone, because of their inherent humanity, should have access to. In understanding the societal impetus behind private and public divisions, and I'm raising this point because this is in the media every single day. And there is a push increasingly to privatize most services. We have certain public services because there is a purpose behind it. There are certain goods that we refuse to place within the private sector because we believe that everyone should have access, we believe in universal access, and we know that within a private system we're referring to exclusive access. That doesn't mean that all, sh all things should be have universal access, and it doesn't mean that no things should have <coughs> exclusive access. It's simply saying there's a toss-up between the two, and it would be a mistake to conflate them.